So somebody, Michael Phillips here, he says he's his dreams of being a Saudi weatherman are over. Yep, that, yep. Yeah, we didn't mean to kill your dream, but, you know, it's... <laughs> It's a. Uh, it might not be so good for you. You know, uh, somebody else who I just um, hid from this channel is uh, was asking about Ethereum, and that was the other interesting thing this past week is Carl Icahn. You know, everybody's like celebrates when the billionaires arrive, right? You know, there's a certain sector of of Bitcoin. There's a certain sector of all the shit coins where they're like, "Hey, a billionaire has arrived! Yay!" So Bitcoin has Paul Tudor Jones. It has Stan Druckenmiller. It has Michael Saylor. And and think of the words they speak when they when they write about it and their reasons why. Now Carl Icahn is uh is going long big uh, Ethereum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carl Icahn is uh he does hostile takeovers. Yeah, right? no, I've known Carl Icahn his career for forty years. Because yeah. when I was on Wall Street starting in nineteen eighty two it was really the beginning of his career as a corporate raider, a green mailer, a friend of Michael Milken and Drexel Burnham Lambert, and his reputation is as a bottom feeder. So um, he doesn't, he's not a smart guy. He just has a lot of lawyers and he goes after companies when he can sue them to death and steal everybody's money. That's Carl Icahn. So uh, the fact that he's entering into the space now and avoiding the pure play, which is Bitcoin, and he's going after the shit around bitcoin it, he said you know that's bad for ethereum because it shows that it's attracting uh, market manipulators um regulatory manipulators and um he's the guy who blew out of hertz car company uh, at the absolute worst time and let all the plebs make millions on it over there at wall street bets uh, he didn't see that play coming um he lost an enormous amount of money last year and um, it's not the guy you want associated with your project. You know, Ethereum wouldn't want Carl Icahn in the project because um, he's, he's a known uh, crook. Yeah, well, so he likes to control. He also likes to basically hollow out and destroy companies, right? So if, if, if there's, um, you, you can't do that with Bitcoin, right? But with Ethereum or all the, um, all the shit coins on top of Ethereum, like you could just uh, rug pull all over the place there. So yeah. like that's easy to do in Ethereum and it's easy to do a corporate raid of Ethereum and plunder all those, um, you know, the newbie dumb, dumb speculators uh, hoping to um, pump and dump and join a pump and dump group and right. things it's like that. It's interesting that these egomaniacs like Carl Icahn and um, Elon Musk are into crypto because they saw that it's after across a trillion dollar threshold in market value. They're like, why am I playing around with Tesla and Hertz stock when I should be playing around with crypto? Because that seems to be the only thing CNBC is talking about these days is Bitcoin and crypto. So they're ignoring me, Carl Icahn, or me, Elon Musk. So I better get into this new thing or Kim Kardashian or Paris Hilton, right? All these celebrities and celebrity CEOs and celebrity corporate raiders, you know, moving into the hot new thing. Uh, it, it's uh, ultimately uh, draws money away from fiat which will you know, drive policymakers insane. Uh, it will be a staging ground for capital before it moves into Bitcoin. Everything ultimately will move into Bitcoin. Even Nassim Taleb will be buying Bitcoin at $500,000 a coin uh, in an act of desperation to save himself. But um, so ultimately though, it's not good for Ethereum in my view. In my view. Well, speaking of Max's view, yeah. Um, if you don't get the likes to 1000 yeah he's gonna do he's gonna do that jessica vaughn pose what? right here and show you his ass no way if we get to 5000 likes i'll show you mine Jeez, that's incredible wow things are really taking an interesting turn here on the orange pill podcast <laughs> orange pill microdose the last days of may as we head into june the official summer summer season you know we're heading to miami we got um lots to do there couple two days Twelve thousand people showing up biggest bitcoin event in history uh, uh anybody who's 
watching this now are they going to be in miami do you know of any any events that are going on i think what? half of these people oh well, there's so many events going on speaking of events going on like did you know that there was a shitcoin 2021 happening at the same time yeah like, down the, the road time? right <laughs> yeah and tone vase is speaking at it because he didn't get invited to speak at bitcoin 2021 so he's going to go speak at shitcoin 2021 <laughs> Wow. This is like that. That's when you know it's like totally official because um, when I was working in Hollywood, you know, there was a Sundance Film Festival and it was like totally groovy and cool and fun. And like for about five, six, seven years, uh, you know, it was just like um, younger people, the assistants in Hollywood and stuff like that that went and it was edgy young filmmakers. And then um, Quentin Tarantino and uh, Sex Lies and Videotape. Those two happen like in the course of one or two years. And then everybody in the world, all these corporate sort of people all flooded into a Sundance Film Festival. And it became a zoo um, where it used to be like really fun and cool, like a high school sort of situation. It was just like small and, uh, you know, you hung out with friends. But um, then as soon as it became huge in corporate, slam dance f happened and now there's like five or six sort of breakaway events that happen around the big the bigger event. Oh, yeah. i said i said Qu i said quentin tarantino happened and sex lies and videos okay okay so. i'm glad you clarified that i'm, I'm glad that was, that was been, been, been clarified but yeah so you got shitcoin festival down the street from bitcoin 2021 and uh, i'm sure if this keeps going by the next couple of years there'll be dozens of these little events happening well, Tone Vase right now is in Dubai. He's about to fly out and go to Miami. So he should be careful because, you know, UAE follows a lot of the Saudi things. So his predictions about price movements oh, and stuff, no. he could end up in, in prison in Saudi Arabia oh, for 10 no. years if he's predicting the climate of, of Bitcoin. <laughs> uh oh, yeah, he better be careful. <laughs> like that will be an interesting spin on, you know, uh, Bitcoin FUD. So you have the energy FUD, you have the China's banning FUD, all that kind of stuff. If Saudi Arabia starts uh, imprisoning people who predict prices on yeah. Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy, that's, that's an interesting FUD right there. Where, where is he? Uh, you, uh, Dubai? Dubai. Oh, yeah. right. He's been there for quite a while. But he's We've been there. It's a nice place. Yeah, it's okay. You know, I wouldn't want to. Um, I wouldn't want to live there. Like, there's a lot of people that live there, and you know, I think it's like you have to. Yeah, you have to do that exit visa. Um, we were covering it during the 2008, 2009 financial crisis, and there was a bunch of, um, uh, like a whole bunch of expats fled <laughs> during the financial crisis, and they abandoned their cars at the airport because, like, you need an exit visa. So you had to pretend, like, all these people were pretending that they were just going on vacation, going home for Christmas or whatever, and um, you, you, you have to pay off all your debts. Like, you can't... You can't exit the country if you live there, if you have any debts. So it, basically there were thousands of cars abandoned at the airport. Like yeah, I remember that. Brand that new cars. Wild. Yeah. 